What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the Kang Toys CT02 Land Ball, a third party masterpiece rendition of the Predacon Tantrum. A huge thank you to Heat Toy for sending this product over to me for a review and if you are in the market for picking this figure up then I highly recommend that you check out Heat Toy and for that I will leave a link down in the description box below to both Heat Toy's listing of the Kang Toys Land Ball as well as a direct link to Heat Toy's website. So taking a quick look at the packaging I think that the packaging on this is actually really nice you can see almost this foil like design on the front of the box however this is cardboard so that is a really nice illusion going on there and you can clearly see tantrum slash land ball there in his robot mode we can also see an outline of him in his ball mode and you've got the name of the product the side of the packaging just has the CT land ball and then on the back of the packaging we have a very similar image to the front however this time reversed with the ball mode taking present and then the robot mode very subtly hinted at in the back. So without further ado, let's open this up and see what awaits us inside. And so here we have Land Ball opened up and out of the packaging and fully transformed up into his ball mode. Now you must excuse me if throughout this review I do refer to Land Ball as Tantrum, as that is the name that I'm more familiar with in terms of this particular character, but you can see here that this is a fantastic masterpiece rendition of Tantrum based on his appearance from the Transformers G1 cartoon series. This is supposed to be one of the Predacons that of course form the mighty Predaking, and I've got to say that upon first glance this looks as if though it's going to be a fantastic third party combiner. You can see here Kang Toys have done a magnificent job in really and truly stylizing and upgrading in my opinion the appearance of Land Ball's alt form. You can see here that of course he is a ball and that is really present when you take a look at the fantastically sculpted head sculpt. You can see you've got the horns here at the top that are almost transparent but they're very very dark in terms of their color scheme. You can see that light can just ever so slightly be seen shining through them. We do of course have the nose ring which is always associated with balls so that's great to see that included here and it is indeed articulated. I think that the proportions on the head sculpt are really really nice and I think that the horns too are also proportioned quite nicely as well. And you can see all of the mechanical detailing, all of the different panels on the legs. I think that the overall anatomy on this is done beautifully. Obviously, this is a mechanical machine, but you can almost pick out where the muscles of a real-life ball would be, just this time obviously replicated in a mechanical format. But you can see here that the way that all of this has been sculpted, I think it's just so proportionally accurate. And I absolutely love how much detail and all the panels that are folded up here on the back of the ball mode. And you've got all of the different decals going on throughout it as well, making the design look really interesting and then as we turn to the back I think once again that the proportions on the back legs look really nice as well and they've even detailed the hoofs of the ball as well and all of those have been painted in a really nice silver paint and you've got some lovely mechanical hydraulics in there as well and to think that they've actually sculpted the tail of the ball as well and this looks really authentic to what a real life ball's tail would actually look like but considering this has been done in a more mechanical format I just think that it's a perfect balance between mechanical and a real life representation a fantastic looking alt mode on this and then just giving you a quick 360 of how it all looks turning it to the underside you can see that I think that it does clear up really nicely under there as well and then you can take a look at the back. Really and truly no kibble whatsoever. It would have been nice if they could have used some of these panels here to fill out this section. But quite honestly, it doesn't bother me too much. And I think that he looks amazing from almost every other angle. In terms of articulation for this mode, the head is on a ball joint. So you can rotate it left to right as well as hinge it up and down on this ball joint. There is also a hinge joint there and a hinge joint there. And then the ball joint is here. So utilizing... All of those joints, I think that you are able to articulate the ball's head in almost any way you so desire, of course, as you begin to make him look more towards the sky. This whole hollow section here is more apparent and evident. But if you just manoeuvre all of these joints around, you can definitely conceal that gap. And I think that that looks quite cool. You saw earlier that the horns can hinge forwards and backwards, so you can have them more erected or you can have them slightly more downwards, which is really nice. We've got the nose ring here, which is articulated, and the actual jaw too is articulated. However, unfortunately, there isn't any detail in there. But he does have light piping, although it is rather difficult to actually get light shining through it, as it is actually the ball socketed joint. I'm not entirely sure how well this will hold up over time, seeing as this is clear plastic. And seeing as the overall light piping on this figure doesn't appear to be that great, I would have much preferred them to have sacrificed this and just gave us a solid plastic joint, 
with just painted eyes. I think that would have perhaps looked slightly better in my opinion. But turning to the articulation of the legs, we do get a ratchet joint forwards and backwards, one click. So one click backwards and one click forwards. You could utilize this joint here in order to articulate where I presume the lower region of the leg would be. So you can articulate that back and the actual foot itself is on a ball joint. So it can pivot side to side as well as move forwards and backwards. The same can be applied to the back legs. However, these ones are actually surprisingly slightly more articulated due to the various transformation hinges they use. However, when you begin to maneuver them, you do definitely break the look and it doesn't look as coherent as it once did. And we of course do get a knee joint there as well. And then finally, we also have got ball joints here for the back legs. Turning to the articulation of the towel, we have a hinge joint here, a hinge joint here, a rotation joint here, and then a hinge joint here, and then finally a hinge joint just at the tip of the towel. So overall for articulation, considering this is a ball, I actually think that it is articulated rather nicely and is articulated in all of the places that you would want it to be. Unfortunately, I don't own the Kang Toys 01 Rampage, so I can't compare the different figures across this combiner line, but I've got to say that this figure is incredibly impressive, and if CT01 is half as good as CT02, then it is definitely a really awesome figure. Now, of course, as this figure is a combiner to that of Predaking, he does, of course, have a combined form. So to, in order to get him into the combined form, you're going to want to start off with this section here. So you're going to want to hinge this whole section down and then where this slot is, it will tab into this tab here. So just hinge all of this down and then just snap that into place. Turn around to this section here and repeat the same process. So just snap that into place. Now what we'll do is we'll come to these legs here. And these are actually rather finicky if I'm being honest with you. You're going to want to take it here and rotate this around. You're then going to want to bring this section up so that it tabs into here. So you're going to want to disengage it and then just align this up and tab that into place. Now what we'll do is we'll take this and you're going to want to hinge this joint down and then fold this section upwards, trying to keep the overall look rather coherent. Just align that up and then collapse this section down. Repeat the exact same process here for this side. So rotate this all the way around and you can hear those incredibly stiff joints which could potentially be a breaking hazard in the future, although the plastic is rather durable on this figure. And then once again, just align that section up, bring this all up, and then just bring that section down. Come to the towel now, and you're going to want to collapse this all in upon itself. And then we come to this section, which is actually quite convoluted and can be rather complex upon first glance. And definitely during the first time you transform this figure, you're going to want to untab all of this and just lift this back for now. Take this section here, fold this flap in, and then fold this section in as well. We're then going to want to take this ratchet joint and it's incredibly heavy duty and you're going to want to ratchet this all the way up and then that will then allow us to take this here and just lift that up and tap that into place. Turn around to this section now and you're going to want to pull this piece away. And this is where I actually have some clearance issues. Once you rotate this, it's very difficult to actually transform this without popping that ball joint off. So I will try my best, you can see, that it did unfortunately just pop off. So you're going to want to angle this in a way. It's very difficult to do. I would recommend spreading these sections and if it does pop off, how you're going to want to get it is in a configuration much like this. So you're going to want to get it into a configuration like this. Definitely quite difficult for me, as you could see, the ball joint does consistently pop off with any pressure that is applied to it, which is unfortunate. I wish that, that perhaps there was some slight give in the actual joint itself. But once that's done, you're going to want to take this section here and just hinge this all up. And you can see these two tabs here and here that these slots here will tab into. So just align all of this up, give all this a nice squeeze, just tabbing all of that into place and then take the ball head now and just rotate this down lift the horns up and there you have tantrum fully transformed up into his combined form now with this figure we don't get the foot and of course we don't get the torso as that is coming with a later release but just by handling this figure and seeing as how weighty and robust this figure is the overall gestalt the entire third party combiner of Predaking created by Kang Toys appears as if though it's going to be incredibly heavy and quite honestly I'm not entirely sure how the foot is going to connect that does concern me ever so slightly as there are no real evident connecting points besides these small circular holes in there which if these are the only things 
that are holding in the foot, it could definitely become an issue. And of course, you saw earlier on the huge ratchet joint that, of course, the upper section is going to slide into. So that'll be really interesting to see this particular combiner take form. But here we have the combined form for our land ball slash tantrum. Now, turning to transformation, quite honestly, I think that this is one of those figures that is slightly over-engineered. The overall look of the ball mode, the combined mode, and the robot mode upon first glance looks as if though it would be common knowledge as to where everything ends up although there are an exceptional amount of steps that you actually have to go through in order to achieve other modes and quite honestly I think that it could have been done in lesser steps in a more manageable way but taking a look at the transformation that I have in front of me when in combined form you're going to want to of course collapse this ratchet joint down so just fold this all the way down and then we're going to want to come into here and lift this section up it can be very difficult to actually get pieces out on this seeing as how small and how there isn't really and truly much clearance so I would recommend just disconnecting this now what we'll do is of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side just so just lift this section up and then hopefully that does allow us to get into this section and pull this piece out so just pull this section out and then pull this flap out also and then just leave this here at the top and we'll deal with this whole section later on now what we'll do is come to the legs and then just take these untap these sections take all this and untab all this and then just rotate it back to the ball configuration now we'll come to this section here and just proceed to bring all this out to the back and lift the ball head up and then pull this off once again you saw that that did come off the ball joint incredibly easily with literally no force applied to it whatsoever then just pull all of these sections back and now coming to these legs you're going to want to take these sections here and just separate those from where the towel is so they do connect via these slots here and here so you're just going to want to detach all of this and now if we turn to the underside we can take these sections here just lift those up and then we'll come to the back and just detach these sections just loosen everything up detach this section here from this section and then that will allow us to bring all of this out so repeat the same process here just pull this away detach that and then take this section and angle this backwards and now we'll take the entire leg and just ratchet all of this back on these incredibly durable and really solid die cast joints. So that's awesome to see that they are indeed using die cast on some of the more integral joints to the actual transformation and to the robot mode itself. So just once again, angle all of those backwards. Coming now to these sections, you're going to want to untap these and then just collapse that in upon itself and fold that all in there. So just fold all that in. Repeat the same process here for this one. So just detach that, bring this section down and then utilizing the double joint, just fold that in. Now coming to this section, fold this piece out and then collapse this silver panel in. This is actually incredibly difficult to actually get back out when you do transform him. And you may be able to see there are a few scuffs of the paint of where I've had to actually use a spudger to actually remove it. So definitely be cautious of that. I do wish that the tolerances on this were slightly looser than they actually are. But I guess it's better to be too tight than to be too loose. And now we'll just bring this whole section down and around. Bring the foot down, come to this piece here fold that back, fold all of this in and to the back and then once again this circular section will plug into this circular port so just snap that into place this piece here will rise up and we'll just groove into place as well come to this section and fold this piece out lift this piece upwards ensure that everything is nice and solidified and that is the transformation for one side done. So of course, repeat the exact same process here for the opposite side now. So bring this all down and around. Hinge this section upwards. Bring this out. Bring this section out. Fold in the silver panel. Bring this all out and down. Fold this section here to the back. Fold the toe out. Bring this in, snap that into place, take this, snap that into place, snap all this in, 
lift this up on this diecast joint once again. The use of diecast is definitely really well received in my book and it's great to see it utilized on some of the joints which perhaps could be slightly more delicate. Fold this down and then just tap this in. And now here with the knee pads, you're just going to want to lift these up and snap those into place just like so. Turning now to this whole upper section, you're going to want to take this torso and just pull it away. It will extend on a hinge joint. So you can see this here, originally it was compressed down. You're going to want to extend it so that it's up. This just allows for us to work on some of this back section to just remove these, extend those, and then just rotate those and hinge those off to the side for now. And then what we'll do is we'll take the head and then we'll take these arms and just disconnect those. And then you're going to want to disconnect all of this from this section and raise it all the way up and snap it into place. With that now done, we can then take this piece, collapse this over, and then this neck joint there will fold in and then you can bring the head in and this tab will peg into this slot in there for the head. So just snap all that into place and then we can just bring this double hinge joint down again. So just compress this now that it's done its purpose. Clip these into place, so snap those in on both sides. We can then begin to loosen all of this up. So pull out this here, just pull all this out. Pull out these sections as well. And once again, the ball joints do pop off rather easily, so definitely be cautious of that. Lift this up and around. And then now you're going to want to get the screw so that it faces backwards of the figure, but at the same time, keep the shoulder pad in place. So rotate all of that around. And then the shoulder pad is on its own hinge, so you can maneuver that around. Take this and just fold this in. And there's the shoulder pad for one side. We can then now come to this section, fold this inwards, and then this will fold in and you'll bring this all the way down and collapse the hoof to where the hand is and just bring that around. Take this section here and then just compress that. Fold out the thumb. Make sure that that's all aligned up appropriately. Repeat the exact same process here for this side. So just attach that and once again, you saw the ball joint pop off. So just remove that and then we'll re-attach this. Take this section, disconnect. Rotate all this around. And the ball joint popped off again. So then just snap that in. Fold up this section. You can indeed leave those out and I will actually do that for the final transformation as I think it looks better. But this here is just for a cleaner look for the actual shoulder pad. And now what we'll do is we'll then just bring the hoof down and up and fold all of this inwards. I actually really do love the engineering to the actual arm as well. And then snap, pull that in. And then we can actually pull these back out. I do actually believe that is the official transformation as well. So perhaps I was doing that slightly wrong, but do Definitely collapse those out. And now turn around to the back of the figure. Just lift the ball head out of the way. Ratchet the arm joints out. You're going to want to take these sections here. They were compressed. You're going to want to extend them. And then they will tab into the sides. So you can see a slot there that this tab here will peg into. So just snap that into place. Bring that all down. Make sure that's all nice and secure. Take the towel. Fold that up to the back. And then here with this. Once again, the clearance is definitely an issue on this. You are then just going to want to compress all of this to the back. And if you can see there, there is a tab that sticks out that will actually insert into this piece. So what I recommend you do here is take the ball head and collapse this joint down first. So that then this will cover that later on. So now just collapse all that into place, lift the horns up, rotate it now around to the front and just take these panels and hinge these outwards on these double hinge joints just to make the chest look ever so slightly more broad and repeat the same process here. And with all that done, here we have Land Ball slash Tantrum fully transformed up 
into his awesome, very intimidating looking robot mode. So after a transformation that I'm sure you'll all agree with me in saying that is on the rather complex and definitely on the more involved side, here we have Land Ball fully transformed up into his robot mode. And I definitely think that the desired effect in his robot mode is definitely a pleasant one. This looks absolutely fantastic. I really do love what Kang Toys are doing with the Predacons. In my opinion, they are one of the more uglier G1 designs. And I think that Kang Toys have taken them and actually made them look rather badass. I think that this figure here definitely does look awesome and is for sure definitely not an opponent to be messed with by the Autobots. This figure looks very menacing and really well built. Definitely very heavy infantry in terms of his overall muscular appearance. And I just think that he looks so, so awesome. Starting off with details, we'll of course start off with the head sculpt. So you can see here for the head sculpt, they have gone for a rather aggressive looking expression, which in my opinion, I actually really do love as it gives more personality to the character than if it was just a neutral expression. So he definitely looks as if though he's growling and you can see the details there of where the teeth would be. I think that looks really nice. I do actually quite like the placement here of the light piping and I think that the overall colour actually does blend in with the head sculpt as well. So you can see that it is this transparent yellow plastic piece there at the back which does shine through to where his visor section would be which is really cool. I absolutely love how the ball head sits on the back. Very G1 accurate with the horn sticking out as well. I think that all looks super cool. And there you've got the shoulder pads with once again the really nice looking decals. Very, very aggressive and menacing. And I think that the overall design to the torso looks really nice. We've got almost this carbon fiber detailing here for the torso, which looks really cool as well. Definitely does to me look like carbon fiber, but a super cool looking detail. And once again, you can see some decals here for the torso. And you can see the armor here for the crutch. And I think that the overall distribution of where all the parts end up here for the robot mode arms is also really nicely done. And if I just open the palms out, you can see the details of the fingers all of the individual sculpted panel lines and the overall blockiness to the legs as well definitely makes it look very intimidating and really, really robust. This figure does feel incredibly heavy as I stated when we had him in his ball mode and his combined configuration. This really is a very heavy duty figure. You can see all of the paint apps look really nice. I do believe that the actual plastic is actually painted as well. You can see that it does have this almost glossy flake to it as well. So I do think that this figure is actually painted rather nicely as well. And you saw earlier that the die cast pieces here are where the knees are. And we also have some die cast pieces here for where these spikes are, which I think looks super cool. They're the only real evident ones. I'm sure that there is more distributed throughout the figure. As, as I stated, he is incredibly weighty, but it does feel as if though most of that weight is here for the legs and you can see how the overall foot transformation worked out as well. I think that he just looks so, so nice. It's really cool how well put together this figure is. And in terms of his articulation, his head is on a ball joint, so it can look down, up, tilt side to side, as well as rotate left to right. You saw earlier on that the shoulder pads are on various different hinge joints. So we've got a hinge joint and a ball joint, so we can rotate these around and they are on their own individual movement joint as well. So you can move those around as well. So just demonstrating that they do move around on their own. The ratchet joints here for the arms you heard earlier on. So these can hinge forwards and backwards. Once again, I wouldn't recommend pushing them too far backwards as the ball joints definitely do appear to pop off on this figure rather easily, which is a shame. They can ratchet out to the sides. They can rotate here for the bicep. He does indeed have a 90 degree bend there for the elbow joint, which is really cool to see. Just angling all that back. And each of the fingers is indeed articulated. So you can see it does hinge here. And then it does also hinge there as well. So two joints there for each finger. And you can see they're on ball joints. So they can be sprayed ever so slightly apart. And the thumb here is also on a hinge joint forwards and backwards as well as up and down. And we do also get another joint there, which is really nice. We do get a rotation joint here for the actual torso. So you can see this can rotate. We do also get an ab crunch, which is really nice to see. So you can crunch this forwards and backwards. Something which I should have mentioned is that when you actually have him transformed up into ball mode, this piece here does tab in to solidify that. So for this mode, you are supposed to just collapse it down and that is actually where the towel will store. So that is an error on my part, but you can see that he does indeed have an ab crunch. We can move these sections here out on these ball joints, ratchet the legs forwards, ratchet them backwards, as well as ratchet them out to the sides. We also do get a hinge joint here for the fire so we can swivel this around we also do get a double jointed knee. However, due to how heavy duty the ratchet joints are, it can be rather difficult to actually utilize it. So you can see that is the movement from one knee. But if you do utilize the other one, you do definitely get a really great degree of motion there, which is really awesome. And I have no problems with this whatsoever as this is completely reinforced by die cast. So just hinge that forwards. And then finally, we do get the articulation, which is on a ball joint 
here for the foot. So you can hinge that forwards and backwards on this hinge joint, as well as rock the ankle side to side on the ball joint. And this piece here does move out for transformation, so you can definitely get a great degree of motion out of that, which is really nice. So overall for articulation, for a figure that is this involved in terms of its transformation, I think that it has worked out really, really nicely. And in terms of accessories for land ball slash tantrum, he does include two. So the first of which is this awesome looking blaster, which once again has some really nice decals. Kang Toys are definitely putting their stamp on these figures, which they really should do as I think they're doing a great job. You can inch this section out. This does actually peg into the ball mode. It pegs onto the rear end of the ball mode. However, I don't think that it looks too great and there's no real weapon storage for this that is mentioned in the instructions. So it is really up to your own interpretation where you do peg this but hinging this section out it does expose a handle which is of course utilized for robot mode and I think that the sculpt work on this looks really nice as well as the paintwork and it does indeed have a port in there which I do imagine is probably for the combined form and we also do have another tab here which I also believe is probably for the combined form as well as it definitely looks as if though something else is going to clip into that but you can see a slot on the handle here that is very masterpiece in its design and of course you just open the palm out which exposes a small tab we align this up so just open all the fingers, wrap the fingers around, and here we have Land Ball or Tantrum wielding this awesome, very heavy duty looking blaster, which I think looks super cool. And he also does include a second accessory, which is this sword, and you are supposed to just fold out the handle. Now there is another section in here, which is made out of clear plastic, and to me it looks as if though it should remove, although I haven't found any way for it to actually pull out whatsoever and I don't want to risk breaking it so that is definitely something to be weary of and by the looks of things similarly to the blaster it does look as if though something is going to connect into this just with all of the different grooves that I can see throughout it so I do think that this is probably going to have more of a purpose when we get him into the combined Predaking form but you can see some nice sculpting and detailing for the handle and once again, it does insert in a very similar fashion to that of how the blaster inserted. Although I would recommend rotating the wrist this way as seeing as how long the handle is, it does tend to bump into this joint. So just demonstrating that we can rotate this hinge joint here and then just open this up and snap that into place. Wrap the fingers around. And there we have Land Ball with both his sword accessory as well as his blaster and I think that this really does complete the look and I think that he's an awesome looking piece. Now as this figure is intended to be a masterpiece representation of Tantrum, I thought that it would only be fit to compare it next to some of the more recent Takara Tomy MP releases such as MP44 as well as the MP version of Hound. You can see here that he definitely is a really large and very imposing character being even taller than that of Optimus Prime which is really nice. You can just see how big the overall just stalk combiner of Predaking is going to be once it's all fully combined, as this is only the lower leg section. So this isn't the thigh section, nor is it the actual foot itself. This is just where the shin section is really and truly. So it's definitely going to be a huge looking piece. Of course, it does compact and compress ever so slightly when we get it transformed up into the combined form. But you can see just how much of a presence this figure has next to MP44. And when you have all of the Predacons fully aligned up from Kang Toys, I think that it's definitely going to be a sight to behold. So there was my review for the Kang Toys CT02 Land Ball, aka the MP style version of Tantrum. Whilst there are some flaws, mainly in regards to some of the tolerances, I do think that the tolerances in the knees are ever so slightly too tight, and I don't like how some of the pieces are very easy to pop off. I wish that perhaps they could have been slightly more secure when transforming the figure, and that whole back section that you saw me talk about earlier on in the transformation, this whole section, I literally cannot transform it without it popping off. So I'm not sure whether that's me doing something wrong, or whether or not it's just incredibly intricate to actually get that piece to transform. But with those nitpicks off to the side, you're left with a really awesome looking ball mode. I think that the ball mode for a mechanical transformable figure looks terrific. Definitely very faithful and has some of the same elements that a real life ball would have. And I also do think that the overall design of this character is once again very faithful to the source material from the original G1 design. I do however really like how Kang Toys have put their own stylized spin on these figures. In my opinion it makes the designs look slightly more badass. As for me, I never really thought that the Predacons in their individual modes looked all that imposing or too threatening but once again I think that Kang Toys have done a really nice job in giving us their own interpretations of how the Predacons should look and taking a look at the combined form when this figure is transformed up into the leg section 
all I can think of is how awesome the fully combined figure is going to turn out. And of course, you have to pick this figure up in order to complete the combiner. So with all that being said, if you are in the market for picking this figure up, then I definitely recommend that you should check out Heat Toy. And for that, I will leave a link down in the description box below. I really do think that Kang Toys is doing a terrific job with their MP styled figures. And I really cannot wait to see what awaits us in future releases. So for me, this figure definitely gets a thumbs up. I think that it's a really awesome looking piece and very imposing. You saw how it looked with some of the official Takara Tomy masterpieces really has great pet presence on the shelf and all I can think of is that with the rest of the teammates it's definitely going to be a sight to behold I really do hope that you enjoyed my review if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below and also be sure to let me know whether or not you're interested in adding this figure to your collection I thank you for watching my review on the Kang Toys CT02 Land Ball and until my next review I'll see you then thanks for watching